What's going on everybody? This is Sean of Raw Select Music and today I want to talk about these albums right here. So as I've stated in a previous recent record pickups vlog, which you can check out either here or here, I always forget which side it appears on. I had mentioned that I had been on a little bit of a Thundercat music binge and now that I've collected all of his records and have listened to them quite a bit, I wanted to share my thoughts and opinions on all of them with you and let you know which ones I think are the best and which ones I think are the most essential but because there is five records to go through right here I'm not gonna try to do this in one video instead I'm actually gonna break it up into two parts where I talk about his most recent records first and then going back to his earliest work last so hopefully I can get that second video out sooner than later but just for today I want to talk about not only only two of his most recent albums, two of what I think are Thundercat's best records to date. Starting with the one released this year, it is what it is. So with that being said, let's get into it. So first, a little bit of background about Thundercat. For those of you who may not know, Stephen Lee Bruner was born in Los Angeles in 1984. Got his start early on as a musician, I believe, according to Wikipedia, when he was as young as 15, he had already managed to score a hit in a boy band that I can't remember the name of, but I'll probably post a little image of it right here. And from there, he would go on to join his brother Ronald in Suicidal Tech. Tendencies. And from there, not only linking up with Flying Lotus for his album Cosmogramma, he would go on to work with other prominent and famous artists like Kendrick Lamar and Erica Badu, and has basically really blown up over the last several years. I'm really surprised how much he went from basically being a go-to session musician to really carving out a name for himself. Thundercat really has created created a star all of his own. And while it seemed like he was sort of a collaborative partner for Flying Lotus for a little while, around the time, at least in my opinion, that Drunk came out, his status really just shot through the roof. And it really seems like over the last several years, Thundercat has really come into his own. But enough about the background of Thundercat. Let's kick off this marathon, I don't know, review session with his most recent record, It Is What It Is. Let's get into it. I should state right out the gate that this is the first Thundercat record that I've picked up. I wanted to buy Drunk years and years ago, but I was always turned off by its slightly exorbitant price tag. But after years of being really curious and wanting to hear Thundercat's music, I finally broke down and started with this record because the tracks that I had heard from it, I really, really liked. Whether it's Black Koalas, Dragon Ball Do-Rag, Fair Chance, and It Is What It Is, all of the singles off of this record really got me excited to hear it because it really seemed like not only did it display Thundercat's wild and often absurdist style of humor which I once likened to Frank Zappa. I don't know if that's entirely accurate but I don't know. It sounded good so I'm still gonna go with it. It also seemed to have probably the most heart that I'd heard up from a Thundercat project and after having listened to this record all the way through front to back multiple times and it is easily the record that I've listened to the most this year and putting it in comparison to all of Thundercat's other records I gotta say I think this is Thundercat's strongest album to date front to back it doesn't feel jumbled it feels like a coherent listen all the way through Thundercat albums do tend to have a lot of little filler interlude tracks in them but this one it really feels like the shorter tracks actually 
help add into the bigger picture of this record. The way that the album kicks off with Lost in Space, Great Scott, 2226, and the way that it gently drifts into the jazzy breakdown on Interstellar Love. And it does it throughout multiple other parts of this record with Miguel's Happy Dance and How Sway and Funny Thing all have this great flow. And even though most of them are just little short interludes, they all work together to make a very cohesive album listen. And they really all flow together. And what's surprising is, despite the fact that there are still a lot of laugh out loud, hilarious Thundercat moments on here, like I Love Lewis Cole, one of my absolute favorite tracks on here, as well as the lead off single that completely sold me on this record, Dragon Ball Do Rag. The touching moments on here are some of the finest, most heartfelt, most emotional moments I've heard from Thundercat yet at this point. And definitely Fair Chance is a track that's just heart wrenching, as you can really hear the heart and soul that he's put into it. And not even Little B in all of his base godness can take away from the actual emotional feeling contained within that track. I gotta say, just in terms of the actual music on here, it's basically everything that he's been doing up until this point refined to the most perfect degree possible. The jazzier elements, especially like the tr track Interstellar Love, has Thundercat and his group of collaborators sounding better than they have on pretty much every album up until this point. And the more straight up funk moments and some of the more straight up uh, electronic moments like the near drum drum and bassness of I Love Lewis Cole or the straight up 80s boogie funk of Black Qualys. I hope I'm saying that right. Sorry if I'm not. All sound incredibly well to me. One of the complaints that I've often heard, especially from the Needle Drop, is that Thundercat's music on a production and engineering level just sounds so flat. And I've never understood that. I feel like in some ways, some of the tracks can have a little bit more of a garage band feel to them. And there's definitely a slightly lo-fi aesthetic to them. But I've never found it distracting. And I've certainly never found that it's pulled me away from the music. I will say that not every single song on this record stands out to me, but it really doesn't take away from the overall enjoyment that I've got from this record. And up until now, this is my favorite record of 2020, and I'm definitely planning on going back to it and listening to it more and more. So in terms of a 2020 release, definitely a favorite so far. And in terms of Thundercats musical catalog, I definitely put it at the top, if not near the top, because of this record right here. Let's get into that one. Next for today, I want to talk about Thundercats Drunk, released in 2017. This was the record that, honest to God, made me, got me interested in Thundercat. The tracks that I'd heard before actually picking this one up, Bus in the Streets, Show You the Way, and Tokyo, and Them Changes, all of those tracks were some of the finest tracks that I'd heard from Thundercat up until this point. And not only that, they really got me interested in picking up one of his albums. But right out the gate. This is one thing that really drove me nuts about this album. Why on earth is it released on four 10-inch records? Seriously, I get it. It has sort of a collector's value and the packaging on this album is second to none. I do really appreciate some creative package design. On the other hand, primarily I use my records for DJing and this is kind of obnoxious. It's not a deal breaker but it did raise the cost of this album for picking it up on vinyl and it, it took me just finally saying I'm willing to pay the cost for this 410 inch box set and in the end I'm really really glad that I ended up finally plopping down the cash for this. While I think that it is what it is is Thundercat's strongest statement to date, I think this is Thundercat's most enjoyable record to date. It doesn't have nearly the flow that it is what it is and it feels a little bit more like a jumbled mix of 
ideas from Thundercat leaping from his love of adult-oriented rock or yacht rock to boogie funk to electronic music to spazzy square pusher style bass workouts to straight up hip hop to trap music. In whatever direction that this record ends up taking, it seems like there is no real through line to it. I guess if you wanted to stretch it a little bit, you could say that the through line is being drunk, as there's many allusions in the lyrics throughout this record talking about a wasted night out and all the things that go along with it. But in general, the tone of this album, the flow, the tracks on this record are absolutely all over the place. One moment, the record is very playful and very humorous and very lighthearted, and then it'll go in a completely different direction and it becomes so dark and depressing and weighty. And it does this within the span of a song or two. Whereas there was definitely tr moments like that on It Is What It Is, it felt like there was definitely a through line to the track order where some of the tracks would go in an order where you'd get a few tracks of more, more emotional music and then you would get some more playful music. And it didn't feel like the switches between tone were quite so jarring. That's not the case with Drunk whatsoever. It really feels like, in a sense, like being drunk where you can go from your highest highs to your lowest lows. But in terms of the general music on here, I really feel like this is Thundercat at his most fun. The funny tracks on here, Bussing These Streets, Tokyo, Jamal Space Ride, Captain Stupido, some of the real standout funny moments are legitimately some of Thundercat's most amusing and effectively amusing tracks that I've heard. It takes a lot for me to find a record that is still funny even after I've listened to it multiple times and Thundercat has somehow managed to create a record that never really gets old to me. And getting into some of the more touching tracks, Them Changes might actually be my all-time favorite Thundercat track. I do feel like this album is a little bit bloated for its own good. There are definitely some throwaway interlude tracks that really just don't add anything to the overall listening experience of this. Wiz Khalifa's contribution on the track Drink That, while I do like the overall hungover tone and dark and dreariness of Thundercat's vocals on that track, Wiz Khalifa just coming in sounds like the annoying friend that doesn't sympathize with your hangover and is telling you it's time to start getting wasted again and it really stands out like a sore thumb in comparison to the overall tone of this record. And I also feel like the last disc four on the vinyl I really just to me is the least interesting part of this record and although none of those tracks are bad by any stretch of the imagination they really just don't stand out in my mind. But that being said, even the last quarter of this record being sort of, sort of, eh, in my opinion, doesn't take away from the fact that at least three quarters of this record is one of the most enjoyable listens in Thundercast discography. It's touching when it wants to be, it's emotionally poignant when it wants to be, and it's absolutely hysterical hysterical when it wants to be. I really, really like this record. I would say on a listening enjoyment level, I like it more than it is what it is. In terms of an artistic statement, I definitely prefer it is what it is. But both of these records are excellent. And if you're going to pick up any Thundercat records, these are the two that I think are absolutely essential. So definitely, if you haven't heard them yet, don't miss out on these two. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching. Be on the lookout. Part 2 will be coming sometime in the near future, if not next week, the week following that. If you've listened to these two albums, let me know what you thought about them down in the comments. If you want to hear these albums for yourself, please head over to my WordPress or Steam It Blogs, because that's where I'll be posting music links to any of the records that I talk about on this channel. And don't forget, please check out my Mixcloud, where you can hear Raw Select Radio, the audio component of this YouTube channel, as well 
as definitely check out on this channel my live stream archives from the Facebook live streams that I've been doing. There you can hear me play a wide assortment of records, including some of the records that I talk about on this channel, as well as some records that I don't get a chance to talk about here. Links to everything, as always, down in the description. But that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, peace out!